The media loves to report on Burning Man. Sometimes they love to love it, sometimes they love to hate it. But the irony is that few reporters have ever gone. I was the top editor at foxnews.com for about a decade. I ran dozens of stories and never sent a reporter to Burning Man. It's expensive, it's hard, so you just kind of do what you can do and, and pick up what you can. I've been to Burning Man five times and in full disclosure, I love it. But it's a great example of how media disinformation happens, how stories are created that aren't true and how then millions of people think something Things the truth and it's not. Here are the seven stupidest stories I found this year on Burning Man. The first is about celebrities. Celebrities click, celebrities make money for news organizations, that's why they put them on there. So a number of news organizations write every year about celebrities at Burning Man. This year was kind of funny because there weren't many. So our first story to look at specifically is CNN who writes, Burning Man was hot for celebs. So in this story, they literally mentioned five celebrities. Ready? Paris Hilton, she counts. DJ Diplo, uh, people have heard of him. Blondish, and season 27 Dancing with the Stars winner, Shauna Burgess. That's it. That was the big Burning Man celebrity Lollapalooza that they had. Not quite Malibu. I've lived at the desert there for probably a month and a half in my life. I might have seen Paris Hilton once. I've never seen any other celebrities. It's kind of silly. So why did this happen? How did this happen? An editor's like, we have to write this story. Reporter goes out, she finds Paris Hilton and a bunch of people that very few people have ever heard of. Doesn't have the balls to say, hey editor, this isn't really a story. They write it, they post it. Everyone believes that it's a celebrity Lollapalooza. Everyone believes that it's a celebrity big shot thing going on and that's just not the case. Certainly wasn't the case this year, sometimes it is. The next story also comes from CNN. Thousands of Burning Man fans are in the middle of a desert with a huge fire threat. <laughs> okay, let me just read. Okay, so the National Weather Service issued a red flag warning for like all of Western Nevada. And as CNN reported, temperatures are expected to be in the 90s and low relative humidity will make for an elevated fire danger, according to CNN meteorologist Brandon Miller. CNN warned that lightning could spark fires and said it was unclear if Burning Man would change any of its planned burns. It's a friggin' desert. Literally, if every plant from, I would say, a five mile radius of Burning Man caught on fire at the same time, no one would care. We would have noticed the smoke. On Burning Man, there's nothing. And on the hills and, 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 and the miles surrounding it, it's a little bit of chaparral and some scrub brush. The concept that there is a fire danger in the middle of one of the most barren deserts in, in America, in any event, Somebody at CNN should be deeply ashamed of himself or herself for trying to create the fear that these 70,000 people in the middle of the desert might somehow emulate. Next one comes from the Reno Gazette Journal. Plant loving burner wants to take the burning out of Burning Man. So there's a gal named Katie Higgins. She's a young gal who lives in Moran and she's been to the burn a few times or a handful of times and she wants them to burn fewer things because it's bad for the environment. Fair enough. Has she started petitions? Has she done this? Has she, what has she done? Yeah, she didn't do anything. She just wrote about it on Facebook and the Reno Gazette Journal decided to write a story on it. When you think about it, there's 70,000 people there. Some of them are probably flat earthers or pro or anti force circumcision. They they decided to write up a story on this for basically no reason that I can think of. The Reno Gazette Journal can write anything they want, but the concept of doing a whole story around Katie Higgins, whose only fame in life on this issue is that she wrote about it on Facebook, eh, maybe not really a newsworthy thing, and I think it's kind of stupid. In fairness, the Reno Gazette Journal is usually the best organization reporting about Burning Man. They're there, they send a reporter or two to it. They, they actually do a decent job on them. This one was just, just kind of stupid. The next story comes from the New York Post. We actually have two from the New York Post today. Babies and diapers are replacing sex and drugs at Burning Man. Yeah, no, they're not. There are some kids at Burning Man, and this was actually a pretty good article looking about parents who bring their kids to it, but that headline is like, oh yes, Burning Man's changing from this kind of uh, this kind of wild thing to a bunch of parents hanging around with, with babies and diapers. There are some kids, we had a couple kids in my camp, it's actually an interesting, I think it's an interesting debate both on what's appropriate, what's inappropriate, from the heat to the sex to all of, all of those things. The little burners aren't replacing sex and drugs. I mean, you don't have to go farther than the featured couple, Bianca and Ted. Take a look at it. Them. Nothing's replacing sex and drugs in those people's households, even their baby. She's hot, he's hot, one of them is a cannabis activist. Anyhow, dumb headline to get people's attention, completely misleading, kind of an okay article on it, 
but don't think that it's turning into a daycare center. Next, we go down under to News Corp Australia, a company I used to work for. Models insane Burning Man outfit. And then they show the pictures of this model who's dressed pretty much like 20% of the women at Burning Man. Uh, pretty hot. She's got a great body. I don't know if this was because Instagram model Kelly Gale was Australian and had a great agent or knew somebody at the newspaper, or if it's just a chance for them to put some softcore porn in there and, and, and call it news. But to say the Australian model wore one of the desert festival's most daring outfits, showing off her amazing body in the process, it's kind of like writing about the one pretty girl on the Dallas cheerleaders team. It's, it's just stupid. The next one comes from Fortune magazine. <laughs> Why today's cryptocurrency crash could, in part, be blamed on Burning Man. Okay, cryptocurrency went down a little bit while a lot of people who probably had some Bitcoin were at uh, Burning Man. So what is Fortune Magazine, one of the top business magazines in the country, what do they cite as their evidence to show that, hey, maybe this had something, maybe this there was a correlation here? They wrote this. People were quick to point the finger on Twitter and Reddit though it remained anyone's guess as to what the catalyst was. So basically, hey, some people said some crap on Twitter and Reddit, and we're gonna put it into a story here and turn it into something that's probably not true, but you might read it and we just made three cents from you, so we're happy. Stupid, stupid. But here's where, here's on, on, the, on the fortune. They should know better. So the next time you're looking at Fortune magazine and trying to figure out some complicated index fund and turning to them for serious advice, Remember how stupid they were with this article? Trust them just a little bit less. The last one again comes from the New York Post. Me Too's bad news for Burning Man's orgy dome. Okay, first of all, somebody at the New York Post isn't getting laid enough and he or she wants to bring us into his misery because this is the second one saying that sex was disappearing at Burning Man. Stephanie Gutman writes for the New York Post. The festival's venerable orgy dome, once a symbol of all that was Burning Man, has slid into obsolescence, a victim of societal trends like the litigation explosion sexual correctness, and the Me Too movement. She goes on to say, can you have a politically correct orgy? And no, you can't, and Burning Man sucks, and everything's everybody's boring again once at it. Stephanie may be a very nice person, but this article is just completely stupid. The first clue is when a reporter quotes Reddit accounts that are anonymous instead of actual real people, even if they don't put the names in. Stephanie writes, Orgy Dome visitors are finding the experience is about as erotic as a tooth cleaning. She quotes somebody from an anonymous online site saying that it felt more like I was waiting to pick up a lawnmower at Sears. Another said, it's like the DMV, you get a number, talk, then wait. So I have an unassailable source about what's gone on in the Orgy Dome for at least the last handful of years. Just so you know, there's always a line to get in. There has always been over the last handful of years a talk. You come in and they're like, don't be a creep. Don't stare too much. Don't grab somebody without their permission. This year, the speech got longer. It was about a four or five minute speech. It wasn't bad. It wasn't PC bullshit. It was actually kind of good common sense things about how to act in a very weird situation. Then people go into the, into a fairly dark air conditioned room with lots of beds and in, inside of a tent. There's a part for just couples where it's public sex. And then there's a part where couples can interact with each other if they want. Although most of that is still less an orgy and more group sex. Still, despite what Stephanie writes, public sex and orgies aren't for everyone. But if you think they're as boring as the DMV, Either something's wrong with you or you've got a very, very weird DMV. Anyhow, this story was completely silly, but it allowed the New York Post to put the word orgy in the in the headline to talk about politics of the day. It was probably one of the top clicking stories on the New York Post that way, but it's complete crap. So that's it for today. My biggest takeaway, don't trust the media. If it's important, heck, don't even trust me. Check it out yourself. Check multiple sources. Realize that you're being spun by so many people that much of what you think is true just isn't and do your research. And finally, if you want to see more goodness like this, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're just getting started here, but we have lots more fun stuff to come. Until next time. If you like this at all, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the little bell icon, and it'll let you know when the next one of these videos comes up. We're also involved in the comment section, so please ask questions or give your thoughts. We'd be happy to chat with you. Finally, La Court News is going to be putting out a lot more videos. We're taking a very critical look at the media because they often lie, and we would love to have you on board with this and giving us your thoughts as we grow this into something real. Thanks.